All right, and we are, are live. I want to thank everybody for being here. I've been, uh, you know, Anthony, I've been uh, thinking about names that we could call today after our Feel Good Friday. I was thinking Maudlin Monday might be a little too much because we're trying to have uh, some, we're trying to have some good positive energy over here. What would you call our Monday broadcast there? Anthony? Start Fresh Monday. Start Fresh Monday. I like right? that. Yeah, man. I think that's a great idea. Because we all do need we have- to. Do we have yeah, a choice? On. We do we have a choice? We don't have a choice. <laughs> no, we certainly so, uh, we certainly do not. I do want to thank everybody for being here as we are bringing people on. I am man. I am getting so many people wanting to uh, connect with us online. What a great thing this is as we're continuing to build our community here. So today we're going to do something which I think is going to be a really interesting program for uh, all of us. I want to say hello to everybody who is uh, watching out there. We're already getting a whole lot of folks on the line. We're going to try something different today, Anthony. I I thought it would be fun, and we're still waiting for our designer friend. Oh, Brian is there. Let me bring him in in just one second. Boop. There he is, Brian Thornton from Las Vegas. Welcome, sir. Good okay. morning. So I'm just getting everybody up to speed about what's happening here. Uh, so uh, what we thought today, what we would do is try to see how all of these different facets of our business are interacting. And David James, uh, you put you put together this group. You guys have these monthly conference calls every single month, trying to help each other, trying to support each other in uh, different facets of the business. So I'm really looking forward to taking this uh, this conversation live. See how everyone out there is processing some of these things. See how you're working together to find great solutions for the other end of this whole uh, mess that's out there. And hopefully we'll bring you guys out there in the audience a little positivity. Of course, we're going to be answering uh, your questions as we possibly can. Understand that we're uh, a little bit behind you, probably a minute or so. Uh, you're behind us, I should say, on the live stream. So if you ask a question, it's going to take a little while to get that into the rotation. But I promise to help uh, as much as possible. So let's introduce everybody. we got uh, David uh, Messersmith representing the development side of the business. David James III representing the supplier vendor side of the business. Mr. Brian Thornton out of Las Vegas representing the design side of the business and Mr. Neil Locke representing the purchasing side of the business. Guys, great to see you. Wish it was a better time to uh, to be seeing you. Uh, Anthony, maybe uh, you want to jump in and start uh, start the conversation flowing today. Well, I know each one of you is, is in a very difficult time in your own businesses and your own families trying to get everybody situated to this our new reality. So thank you for taking the time to kind of be with us, first and foremost. Um, I know it takes a lot of time in organization just to get on here, so thank you very much. And before we start asking business questions, I want to say to each one of you, how you guys doing? Literally, David, how are you? How's your mindset? So, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing great. You know, obviously it's a, it's a new reality for all of us, but uh, you stay positive and uh, get up every morning and, and keep on cranking. Right. And David, why do you have a Christmas tree? David James, why do you have a Christmas tree going on? <laughs> well, um, you know, again, to, to mirror that, trying to stay positive and be happy. I'd seen some notes about uh, people putting Christmas Christmas lights back up, holiday decorations. So I thought that I would spend the time and, and put my holiday decorations back up. But normally I'm traveling, so uh, they never came down. So, I they, they never, so, <laughs> so, um, so how's everyone else? Doing? How's Vegas doing? I mean, obviously it's shut oh. down. What does that feel like? I mean, what is what is the spirit of Vegas? You know, we you know, said- it's kind of surreal, Anthony. Um, I was driving around yesterday trying to just get some fresh air. I didn't get out of my car. Um, but I've been doing that. Um, the period uh, uh, Thanksgiving, but before Christmas, when there are no tourists in town, but um, you know, people are out. And, you know, people are hopeful and it's not like the sky is falling, but, uh, you know, we're certainly concerned and um, we don't think that this is going to be forever. No, it won't be forever. And, and, and we, we, I think we all have that attitude that this is going to turn around. We're going to be bigger, better than ever. This is the hospitality industry. This country doesn't, doesn't run without us, period, end of story. Um, so it has to come back if the country is going to come back uh, to be stronger. Neil, how, how are you doing today? You know, you guys are breaking up. I'm going to. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's go to uh, Mr. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll get right back to you. David James, why don't, um, why don't you tell us, uh, why don't you give us a, a good 30 seconds on this group, what you're trying to achieve with each other, and maybe one big issue you're starting to discuss about this particular situation that we're all going through right now. 
Absolutely. Thanks, Glenn. So the Hospitality Mastermind Group, and you've got about half of us here, we developed this back, we started talking about it in 2017, end of 2017, and the idea was to bring along the whole uh, section of the value chain. So designers, mm -hmm. purchasing agents, developers, brands, and um, um, suppliers. Um, and uh, the idea was to better understand e how each discipline works together. Um, and the thought is by understanding a little bit more about how we all work together and collaborate together, we can improve timelines and efficiencies and, and how to work better and then share that, share that information with the, the rest of the industry. And uh, I think we all learn a little bit something different in, in mm -hmm. each and every one of the calls. And we started in 2018 and uh, we're on our third year and uh, it's been an exciting group and it's morphed into, we started talking about tariffs when that became a thing and we learned a lot of things. And then of course, this is Monday was the second, second month in a row talking about coronavirus, but um, it's, it's been a very useful conversation. I think we've all learned a lot and uh, we like sharing it with everybody and uh, we're, we're glad to be a part of this uh, this call here. Right. Hey, and I want to just jump in real quick, Anthony. I'll let you take it away. But we've got people coming from all over the country, all over the world uh, today watching this show. So uh, thank you so much for being here wherever you are. I know we got people from uh, Europe all throughout the United States. So this is uh, pretty exciting to see. Please take it away, Anthony. So one of the things that I'm asked every single hour or minute or second, it seems, um, through all my social media is what are do people doing to forgive um, the invoice this month or next month. Um, we're cutting back paychecks. We're closing hotels. What What is the standard? What is the right thing to do? Um, you know, from procurement design, like what, it, you know, I know in my, my own business, people are asking for forgiveness right now. So what do you, um, what do you guys think about that? Neil, I'm a little concerned that you're still having some, uh, some issues with your connection. Are you able to hear us and see us? I'm going to guess that's a, 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 a no. So, a no. Mr. Messer, uh, Mr. Smith, maybe you can answer that one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as far as invoice forgiveness, I mean, that's that's uh, discussions we're having. I had one this morning, as a matter of fact. And so, it is a reality. I think uh, in uh, as, as much as possible, we all just need to be flexible at this time, uh, especially if you're in a, uh, you know, if your line of work is one that's based on um, human capital and less on goods, right? Uh, yeah, you know, we tell we're talking to all of our uh, all of our vendors and all of our industry colleagues. You know, hold on to your people as much as you can. Uh, but we also realize at this time, you know, a lot of us, uh, you know, it's it's we're having a hard time paying bills, right? And so, uh, you know, if, if you're able to extend uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of credit to to some of your uh, clients, that's helpful to the clients. It keeps the projects moving forward, right? Um, obviously, that's not a reality for everybody. Everybody can't do that. But if you're in a position where you can. Uh, extend uh, some longer terms for your clients or, or even pause the billing uh, with the understanding and, and obviously get it in writing that uh, that you can you can make that up later when this thing turns around because it will turn around right we're, we're, we're all going to be okay um, you know this is the hospitality industry we've gone through this we're it's it's going to be painful probably for a little bit but we're going to be okay so if you can uh, get your uh, uh, get your clients to agree to you know uh, you know, pause the invoices for now and make you whole later. Um, I think that's best for everybody to keep projects moving forward. Yeah, and I think what's important is you help me, I help you, we all help each other. Yeah. So if I'm giving you a break, someone else is going to give me a break, and we're all going to remember this. I, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to remember the people that took care of me and the people I took care of and the people that disappeared. I'm going to remember that. We're that's all right. in this together. And so um, no one is stronger than anyone else right now. Everyone is in this together. So if your business is flourishing because you're in that need business right now, then that's great. But your family is still probably suffering in some way or another. OK, so someone's helping them. So you now need to pay it back. So I think that is critical thinking. So thank you for that. Welcome yep. back, Neil. Uh, can Neil, can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? And Neil is fighting with. Uh, I can uh, hear you now. It's, uh, I don't know for yeah. certain. All right. So, uh, Neil, are you able to are you able to uh, communicate with us at this point? Want to keep the show flow going over here? If so, maybe tell us a little bit about um, what you're thinking about in terms of helping each other keep this business moving forward when it comes to uh, invoicing or other issues that you're you're thinking about. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. 
Yeah, you're still breaking. We're all working remotely, but for our business, that's not a that's not a burden. About eighty percent of my team works remotely all the time. So, in terms of doing everyday business, at, we're required. We we're able to service our customers and our clients and communicate with everybody. Um, it's a brave new world out there, as we all know. Um, all sorts of different things are happening with our projects. Uh, I haven't had any go on hold completely, but a few have been postponed or 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 uh, or, or uh, on hiatus for mm -hmm. a little while. Um, but everybody's communicating well and um, generally trying to keep optimistic. So, what kind of projects do you have in the pipeline? What are you What are you exactly doing right now? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. What projects are you engaged in currently, Neil? And also, while we're uh, talking, it looks like the bottom part of your screen is being uh, obscured by something. Yeah. Oh, can you see that's me better, better now? Uh, yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. So what projects yeah, are you working on? What, what, what kind of things are you still in the pipeline? I'm going to have to leave again and go some other place. I don't know why. When the, when the All right. I'm going to remove you from the stream. And let's... No, no worries. Go take care of it. I'll get you back on when you have a chance. That's one of the risks that we have here with a, uh, a live broadcast. You never know what's going to happen. Um, let's get the let's kick that question to Brian Thornton. Please answer, sir. Can you repeat the question, please? What am I doing? <laughs> uh, we were curious to what's in your coffee over there that's helping you get through right now, Brian. A lot of gratitude. Ah. So um, what? Go on, please. I go love ahead, that Andrew. answer. No, I love. So basically, what we're asking is. Um, what are you doing as far as invoicing, as far as people not being able to pay their bills or you're not being able to, to take care of an invoice for, for a project? How are you handling that right now? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a tiny businessman. I'm a small company and I've been operating on social distancing more or less for the last four or five years. And I've, I've lived through the great uh, recession of, of 2009. So there were lessons learned there. And uh, just erring on the side of, of conservatism, you know, just not stretching out too far, working on small, easily managed projects that probably will continue right through this, this period. And we were prepared for this. And we saw this coming about six weeks ago. I literally turned in a proposal uh, mm -hmm. just an hour ago. So there are some uh, sectors that will um, go forward. But, you know, as far as just being conservative, and not letting anyone go. I work with consultants, I have no employees, and we've, we've had that conversation over two weeks ago. We think this is gonna get worse. Um, you're gonna get all of your money, you're just not gonna get it all at one time. And I think with that uh, honesty and trustworthiness, uh, we're gonna get through this. We have to believe that. So what are the types of projects you're working on right now, uh, Brian, that you think are the ones that are gonna uh, stick around? Um, certainly luxury, I, I think, in, in renovations uh, will probably continue. Um, certainly um, some of the smaller brand hotels that are, you know, are staples mm -hmm. to the larger brands. And um, what I'm also learning and getting used to are, are term shares, which are you know, owner-based and not wholly, you know, wholeheartedly uh, owned by uh, brands. Uh, they have help. So I think that might very well make okay. Welcome back, Neil. Hi. I can hey, I think you've got yourself some uh, decent Wi-Fi at this point. So you were saying, Neil, that about 80% of your people work uh, remotely already. Therefore, this is not really necessarily changing the structure of how you operate your business. But what about the business itself? What changes are you seeing immediately? How are you responding to those changes? And how are you making sure that uh, you can keep your your train running here on those tracks. Yeah. Well, the business is changing uh, rapidly because of, obviously because of this, the, the situation. Some of our, I, I just came back on and I heard Brian saying that uh, some clients were saying, well, we're going to pay you, but we're not going to pay that we had promised before because the, the project is slowing down. And we're experiencing mm -hmm. that. We're experiencing that in several instances as well. Uh, but in terms of doing that everyday kind of stuff, purchase orders, communicate with vendors, communicate with clients, um, we're full speed ahead. Everybody's everybody's on board working from home and 
and things seem to be running smoothly from an operational point of view. Excellent. David, Mr. Smith, um, you're focused um, a lot on that higher end of the, the market. So yep. you may not be getting squeezed as much necessarily in the long term as folks that maybe are focused on uh, select service properties, which have been the real bread and butter part of our industry. Is that an accurate statement? And how are you uh, how are you faring today when you're thinking about your, your projects and all of the business that you're doing out there? Yeah, I think uh, it's it's interesting. If you look at deal flow, um, yeah, you know, that started to slow down a little bit. Uh, but uh, I, I think as a developer, our, our real concern at this point is, is the capital markets, right? Uh, because uh, you know none of this happens without uh, without investors, without both debt and equity. And uh, we're finding the uh, you know a lot of the lenders are uh, their, their their due diligence periods are starting to stretch out a little bit. Um, and start to slow that process down a little bit. So, again, I, I think, um, and this is not a "woe is me" type of story, as much as it is to say th you know, things are things are going forward. They're just taking a little bit longer now, um, and I think that'll continue to be the case, right? Uh, we right. we're still pushing forward with all of our projects. Uh, uh, everything is still a go, and um, a lot of that will just kind of depend on the capital markets. Our administration is currently trying to pass some uh, uh, some some relief bills that should help us all. But uh, uh, we're we're still moving forward and uh, you know just trying to trying to keep all the projects moving. Right. I got a question, uh, Anthony. Uh, and um, you know maybe uh, <laughs> you can uh, voice your opinion before tossing it off to someone else. But um, Sean Worker asks: um, Assuming that many in the uh, the supply chain offer a delayed payment, who's left holding the empty cash bucket? Are we headed for barter? In quotes. Oh, I think we, Anthony. I cannot hear you currently. Try one more time. Then, I, so maybe if I don't mute my mic, that'll help you. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, if I had a choice, I'd always mute your mic. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're seeing barter already. I think I think people are doing that already. I know right. uh, a lot of my clients can't pay right now. We're still doing the work. We're still helping them. That's right. Um, we're we're doing everything we can. So um, I just had someone uh, send me something uh, out of nowhere that will help me with my home office. So I think you're seeing it already. I think that um, this is critical because this isn't going to be over next week. We don't know if it's going to be over next month. We don't know if it's going to be over in two months or three months. So the people that had a little bit of a cushion or a lot of bit of a cushion are going to have a little bit of a cushion. People that had a little bit of a cushion are going to have no cushion. People that had no cushion need severe help. So it's all going to start going down a little bit before it goes back up. So if you're not in the barter space, if you're not helping people, if you don't understand that your client today who's suffering is going to be your client that's going to help you, you know, put your kids through college, then you got a problem, and you're just not, um, you're not, you're not paying attention, in my opinion. Right, Neil, you want to follow up on that if you are uh, getting our signal over there? Uh, do you, Neil, are you, are you able to uh, follow up on that? Um, so I'm going to sit up. Oh. Let's toss it to David. Yeah. David, James. Th th thanks for saying that, Anthony. That's, uh, those are great, great points. Um, I, so far we've seen really no slowdown. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've seen people pushing projects and I'm, I'm wondering if that has something to do with, we want to get it in before, um, before, you know, but who knows what happens. Um, it, I've talked to other purchasing agents and, um, you know, they've seen almost no slowdown. Uh, another agent that said they had 300 projects and only three of them were postponed and they were only postponed like a short period of time. But I think, like you said, it's a trickle down thing and trickle down, trickle up and trickle all around. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think we're, we're starting to see the beginnings. Um, some of the, the hotels like Anthony, what's your experience? You've seen lots of massive layoffs and stuff like that from a value chain, uh, supply and that sort of thing, what we're seeing is nothing slowed down, but uh, I wonder if three months from now, when uh, hopefully less than three months, this is over, then we're gonna see a lull for a few months. Um, and uh, so we're trying to capture as much business as we can now um, to sustain us through this. Um, but uh, so, so far the other, the other um, suppliers I talked to, vendors and designers, there's been almost no stop in projects. 
Um, but we're all learning how to work remotely and do podcasts and this kind of thing and learning the uh, fun aspects of doing this. And we're not quite perfect yet. We're all professionals and very good at what we do. And now we're making a massive adaptation on how to do business. And, you know, it's going to be a little sloppy, a little bit. But for the most part, I, I think we're, we're, we're figuring it out. Right. Um, and that's that's an industry, and that's as you know us as as a whole. As right. Yeah, and, I and would, to, quote my, to quote my twenty year old, one of my twins, uh, she said to me, "Dad, I'm really learning how to adapt." <laughs> <laughs> right. So if, so if a twenty year old got it, a fifty year old should get it. <laughs> what were you going to say, Glenn? I'm sorry. Oh my goodness, I don't even remember. That was uh pretty funny. I know uh, Neil's trying to get back on here. But uh, we got a question from uh, Gary Cardono, president at G Hospitality. Gary, I know you wanted to ask this question on Friday. I put you off to today. So let's get let's get right into it. How are manufacturers helping owners and developers out there? Interesting. Yeah, so so uh, I, I would say this is a, is a owner developer. Uh, you know, we actually had a great discussion uh, just on Friday with um, – Alessandro Manga, who's our uh, interior design firm out of Toronto on one of our projects, and and he talked about just what a unique opportunity this this has created to to try some new resources when uh, uh, when your manufacturers are not willing to help. Um, so it kind of goes back to what Anthony was saying earlier, right? Uh, you know, this is a great opportunity. Uh, you know, make sure you're awake, make sure you're available, answer your phone when it rings because. Uh, you know, when, uh, when, when your designers, your procurement firms are calling to, you know, uh, ask questions, um, you know, if, if, if you can't move quick, um, they're, they're looking at alternative resources. And so that's that's been uh, an interesting um, development. Uh, and I think we saw a little bit of that back in 2008, 2009 as well, right? Uh, you know, there, there's some firms that popped up during that time frame and, and uh, took advantage of, of the opportunity while people were sleeping and crying about how tough things were. So yeah, um, I, I think there's a great opportunity for, for people who are awake. That's a, that's a really great point, and there are lots of good opportunities. One opportunity that David James mentioned uh, I would like to discourage you from, and that is starting up any podcasts or videos. We already got enough people <laughs> doing that. It's all I got left. So don't go ahead doing uh, all that. Uh, uh, Anthony? Yeah, but you were first, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I, I do think that, um, you know, you've got a great point there, uh, David Messersmith, uh, about finding new opportunities because there's always opportunities that are there in the market. They just might not reveal themselves as if we uh, like we've been for the last uh, five, six years or so when there just seemed so much opportunity out there. So, yeah, that's a great Great messaging. Get out there and really think about what's under that surface level about how you can maximize your opportunities. I know I've shifted my whole business at this point, Anthony, and you and I are talking about this stuff uh, constantly because we have to keep moving forward. We will find ways. Anthony? You know, one of the things we have is we you talked about it every day. It's called Hospitality Success Program. It's on Facebook. We're bringing right. everyone. It, you, it was a paid channel. Now we've opened it up. And it's a hospitality success program where all hoteliers can ask questions. They ask me a question. I may call one of you guys saying, hey, we need help with this. We need help with that. So there's opportunity there. We've gotten 400 members literally, I think, in the last seven days, eight days. So hopefully we'll get more hospitality success program on Facebook. Go there. Ask questions. Ask questions to your fellow uh, hoteliers. We'll get the question out to experts. We'll bring experts on. We're going to do this every day, seven days a week if we have to. And that's another thing that I want to suggest to everyone. If you're not answering your phone at 9 o'clock at night or you're not answering your phone on Saturday or Sunday, um, I don't know if I want to have a conversation with you. Uh, you should be answering your phone uh, very often because, again, there's if you look at – the recession in 2008, you look at what happened to us in 2008, we didn't have the component of the healthcare problem, okay? We didn't have where we were all isolated. We didn't have a problem. We were afraid to leave our house. We, weren't, we didn't have the problem with how we're going to get food, how we're going to get gas, how our kids are going to be home and study. We didn't have that problem. We had the problem of economics. We have both problems at the same time. So if we're not there for our clients, we're not there for our employees or our friends, um, I think uh, coming out of this, you're, you're going to be isolated. Great. We definitely have more questions coming in at this point, but I got to hear from uh, Brian and we got to hear from uh, Neil as uh, as well, because we haven't heard from you guys uh, in a while. 
Neil, um, I, I think that uh, this is an interesting question because uh, um, you can, I, I just want to hear you talk. But Justin uh, Hornback says, just think about how hard it would be to adapt without all this technology connecting everyone. You may not be part of uh, uh, that uh, revolution here. But, um, you know, what are you thinking about what uh, Anthony's saying? And then I want to hear from uh, from Mr. Thornton. I, I, I agree with Anthony that this is different than it was in 2008. Uh, but I also think that it's going to come back a lot quicker. Yes. I think the, the under the underlying economic fundamentals uh, are strong. And I know the hotel uh, industry was already starting to have a little downturn uh, with RevPAR. But uh, uh, until this happened, uh, we were getting lots of inquiries and, and booking a lot of projects at a, at a pace that it had been unlike any in, in the 22 years we've been as Neil Locke and Associates. So I'm optimistic. We're still booking business. We, last week, we got a small project. Uh, I'm, I, I'm talking to a client this afternoon about a new project. And uh, and there are a few other projects that I'm going to be bidding this week. So I'm, I'm optimistic and, and trying to be realistic at the same time. All right. So quick but I think if, if I could just say if I could just say what he said about Repfar, what yeah. you saw about Repfar last week or ten days ago or even yesterday, and what you're going to see ten days from now, I think is going to be significant change. I think it's you know we're we're going down the cliff and we're going to be going off the cliff a little bit on Repfar um, in the next ten days when you start seeing those those numbers because people aren't traveling, people can't people are closing hotels. So I think what you saw last week is going to be different than what you see next week. With again being positive that it's going to be better in 30, 60, 90 days. But I think uh, next 10 days, those numbers are going to be a little shocking. Right. Quick, uh, quick follow up for uh, Neil Locke over there. Neil, these new projects, are they uh, are they new builds? Are they CapEx builds? Uh, you know, renovations? What 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 is the uh, type of project projects you're talking about here? Uh, a, a couple of them are new builds. Wow. And a, cu a couple of them are, uh, I guess we call it a, a brand change. A client has purchased some assets and is going to convert them to a new brand that he's that he's starting to develop. So right. it's it's a it's a mix it's a mixed bag. I know on some of our larger projects, uh, the the clients have said that the capital markets are a little uneasy now. So it's going to take them longer to get their project finance finance, but they're fully committed to it to to it and to them. Right, um, Brian. What about you? The types of projects that you're seeing? Um, new builds um, that were started obviously a, a while back. Um, that are about to install. Obviously, that's going to be slightly delayed, um, but I'm hopeful. And ironically, uh, the FF&E, a large part of that, is coming from China, and it's on track. Um, and then everything else um, that I'm participating in now are, are renovations. Um, you know, so it's, it's a little bit of a mix. Right. Excellent. Um, all right, so... We've got some more questions here. One that's a little bit off topic, but I know uh, Shama Patel has been wanting to talk about this for a little while. Maybe we could get this in. Um, are hotel businesses prepared for cyber threats as they move online? How could they safeguard their customer data? Um, Anthony, I'm seeing a lot of um, a, a lot of things going on right now with like uh, COVID-19 statistics and stuff like that. That's actually a cybersecurity threat. Um, what do you think about what she's suggesting? Well, I just I just spoke to someone that's uh, very high level in cybersecurity for one of the largest companies out there that's protecting all of us right now. And he said, first of all, so thanks for bringing it up. Do not open anything that says COVID-19, um, where, where is everything traveling? Uh, uh, this is how to protect yourself. This is the kind of um, this is the kind of how you sanitize. Unless it's a trusted email that you know, do not open it. He says it's going rampant. So I, I can't answer that question because I'm not an expert. But what I can say is, please send me any of your questions. Uh, maybe we'll have that gentleman on very soon. Um, and how you can protect yourself, how you can protect your hotel. I'm not an expert, but I have him on speed dial. And he's been nothing but uh, very accessible to me, even though he's dealing with the larger, I would say one of the most important companies right now protecting all of us. So um, in the healthcare center. So so ask me the questions. I'll get you answers. But I can't answer that because I'm not an expert. All right. We got another badass question from uh, Sean Worker over there. Hey, can the panel share any experience that they're having with banks and other sources of credit during the last couple of few weeks over there? Are financiers being uh, helpful or, you know, I'm ad-libbing this part or are they just being themselves? <laughs> Uh, I, 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 you're I, a Russian to answer that one, David Messersmith. Yeah, thanks. Uh, no, I, th I think um, I, I think I think the capital markets are being very 
cautious right now, right? Um, and so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think things are, you know, they're, they're taking more time on their due diligence and running their feasibility, and and uh, and, and that's to be expected, right? And so, I, I don't think that they're pulling back necessarily so much as they are, you know, moving much slower and digging a lot deeper. Right. Excellent. Makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, Neil, are you having any experience in that regard currently? I've, I've had no experience in, at all in that regard other than what Fair I enough. hear from my clients. Right. Fair enough. Have you heard stuff that's similar to what David is, is saying from your clients? Yeah, I, I've, I've, heard, I've heard that uh, the financing community is, is, is being uh, more guarded now and a, and a little more conservative right. and, and being more deliberate. Right. I think if you had a good relationship with your bank and, uh, you know, six months ago, uh, you'll be first on the list. But if, if due diligence, I think there's got to be a new term for due diligence because it's going to be due diligence times 10 uh, because they can't they can't forecast the market. No one can. Uh, who's forecasting this market 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, six months from now? It's really it's really impossible. So people are taking it day by day. If you have a good relationship with your banks, um, I'm sure that there will be money there, but um, it's going to slow up. And, it, and hopefully all the good deeds you did and all the cash flow that you, you threw their way and all the money you made them, will, will, uh, they'll do you favors just like you're doing everybody else's favors. But as far as forecasting, I mean, it's probably uh, it's like breathing a, a crystal ball at this point. Right. So that's really the message, Anthony, that I'm getting out of this uh, th this broadcast here is we need to continue to find ways to be flexible with each other, help each other out, because if we help someone else, someone might help us. And we're going to continue to be able to, to create that uh, positive feedback loop that we all need right now to keep us uh, going over there. So I got a I got a question, Anthony. I think this one might be going for you a little bit of an aside, guys. Um, but Howard Lucan's been a. Um, has been a, a fervent watcher of all of our videos. So he's interviewing for GM position at a fantastic bed and breakfast in the middle of Ohio. It's remote. Um, he's, he, he's got a six page proposal to basically restart the business from scratch. They've got 12 seats, a commercial kitchen, dining room and bar. Uh, any thoughts on if he got that, how you actually restart a business like that after times like this? Well, when are you going to restart it? You're going to restart it when times are starting to move or are you going to restart it like you're going to try he, to he, do a little he, bit now? He didn't say and he won't hear that for a minute and a half. So let's just assume that uh, when he restarts when, it, when, 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 it, it goes. Right, when it's feasible to move forward. Well, well the first thing is um, good news, bad news is you're going to have your talent pool uh, is going to be great. And you're going to be able to have the people um, that are out there looking for work. And so your interview process, the way you hire people, um, if you wanted to change it, now's the time to change it. Because now if you can get the right people, um, that, that's critical. Number two, I always run a business like I'm going out of business. So we, we I didn't need to get kicked uh, in the butt in 2008. I didn't need to get kicked in the butt in 2020. Okay. I always run my business the way um, – I, I've learned as a kid, you know, save your money and, 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 and take care of people and don't ever get too high or too low. Oh, that's number two. And number three, think of something you can bring to the market that no one else is doing um, because you, you have six weeks, maybe three weeks, four weeks. We have a lot of creative time. Right? We have a lot of time to reflect, a lot of time to think out of the box. Now's the time to do that. So if you do those three things, you'll be set up to open the Right. All right. Anthony, yeah. signal is... right. All right. Uh, Anthony, your signal is getting a little uh, a little rough and tumble over there. Uh, Gary Cardona has another question. Uh, Neil, maybe you could uh, answer this one, then we'll move around the room. Our new hotel, our hotel owners looking to renovate now while occupancy is low. Obviously, some will. Some are in panic mode, et cetera, et cetera. But is there any trend that you are able to see right now, Neil? And if not, what do you think is going to happen in the future? Yeah. First of all, I want to say hi to Gary. Gary, hope you're doing well. Uh, the the answer to the question is that it's that it's 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 kind of random. There are some clients, and I've heard there are some clients that are are moving at at ramp, warp speed to get the projects done now. Uh, also, because they think it's a buyer's market in terms of of, of purchasing as well, because they think that uh, there there's going to be greater demand later on on FF and E than there is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, some clients have decided to put the projects on hold because they're in a panic mode. Right. Brian? Yeah. Um, you know, I, if, if I were an owner now in, in this, uh, certainly in this situation, 
and occupancy is down. Um, this is a time to do a very quick uh, soft renovation, paint, wall covering, replacing carpet, you know, things that can move very quickly and not disrupt um, business wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I certainly think um, you're going to see a lot of the long renovation. Um, a little bit more planning, right? And um, and I, I think those will get pushed out, but certainly, um, you know, the soft goods, you know, furniture, uh, wall covering, uh, reupholstery, um, you know, those things that can be turned around fairly quickly. I think we're going to see a lot more of that happen. Right. Excellent. Uh, Anthony, welcome back to the show. Thank you, sir. I'll be right with you. All I'm right. Changing gonna... headphones. All right. I'm really uh, excited that we get to see the wall behind Anthony's head. Me. Meanwhile, while he's changing headphones, uh, Kevin Joseph Fitzgerald, who's a manufacturer's representative, is curious to know what impact on RevPAR might the situation have, and do you think it will follow a similar pattern to post 9-11? We already talked about uh, being RevPAR being a little bit unpredictable. I'm hearing um, different opinions out there. V-shape recovery, extended U-shape recovery. I even heard today it's going to be an L-shape recovery. Boop. That's not any good for anybody. Anybody want to put on their tinfoil hat or aluminum foil hat, as I like to say right now, because we don't use tinfoil people and make a, uh, a prognostication over here. You know, I think one thing I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a slow recovery, and then it's going to speed up, uh, and it's going to ramp up really, really fast. But I think it's going to start a lot slower than people anticipating. But once it hits uh, a point, I think then it's then it's, it's going to go into fourth gear from second gear pretty quick. That's just my opinion based on a lot of things I'm seeing and a lot of things in my, in my experience. David M. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's, you know, JLL put out a report just this past week that talked about how quickly China is rebounding. And I think that's something to pay attention to, right? Um, you know, because they went through the ringer. I mean, their economy was essentially shut down and dead. Um, in the last 10 days, coal production is, is or coal usage is way up, which means manufacturing is happening. Uh, traffic congestion is way up. Um, you know, consumer spending is up. Uh, I spoke to a lighter manufacturer at the end of last week. And she said they went from uh, zero percent capacity to uh, a little over fifty-five percent uh, capacity in ten days. Um, so, the, you know, and that, that was in China. And so, you know, that, that that's definitely something to pay attention to. I, I do think that uh, you know, once we find that bottom, wherever that is, uh, we'll I think we'll bounce back. Um, and again, I think it just uh, it's going to require all of us to be be on our toes and be ready to move. Right. Uh, we uh, David James. Yeah, um, the thing that I keep thinking and, and, and hearing is China was the first to, to see this, obviously. And and uh, uh, from my understanding, three and a half months from first case uh, found to what they're doing now in, in recovery. So I look at that, okay, that's a quarter. Maybe we're a little better prepared. Um, and we've seen the mistakes other people have made. So it's it's three months of, uh, and we might be a month into that uh, from from the, the, the first case diagnosed here. So maybe we got two months of this left. Maybe this is really optimistic, but if you want my crystal ball opinion, um, you know, if it's if it's three months and and nobody knows how the hell to predict any of what's going to happen, I say it's another thirty days before we get a, an idea of what right. what it really looks like. Maybe two weeks before we really know how bad or how good it is and how we can get around it, and then maybe they can start making better market predictions. All right, for the, for the future. Okay, so forget forget your crystal ball prediction. What if you're reading the tea leaves? How's it different there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's get serious for uh, a, a, a little bit. Um, uh, Larry Birnbaum, uh, VP of Global uh, Hospitality, is wonder is COVID nineteen is triggering any force majeure clo um, clauses in agreements. Anybody seeing anything in regards to that currently today? No, yeah, but I think more coming. I'm sorry, was that? Uh, I, I haven't yet, but I've, I've heard some rumors of uh, that that's something that would be on the table shortly, potentially. Right. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't doubt that'll happen. I think uh, Anthony is trying to sign back on right now. Boy, we are experiencing the entire universe using the Internet at once, it seems like today. And it's getting a little more complicated to do these live broadcasts. Good thing uh, we're keeping on our toes here at uh, No Vacancy. And of course, 
uh, checking in with Anthony and Glenn. Let me put that little logo back up and let's give Anthony a little love. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Milkuri. Great to see you. Can you actually hear us? We do I not. I'm back. Know. All right. He is sure. back. All right. Um, Anthony, uh, I'm, I'm starting to feel like we probably worked our way through a lot of these topics. Is there anything else that you want to, uh, you want to discuss, uh, today before we start to go into wrap up mode here? Um, not really just that, um, thanks for being on and, you know, we're doing all, all our best. And I think what we're seeing in each other and just out there is everyone's in the same boat and I don't really see anyone that's not participating uh, and not helping each other. So thank you all for coming on and helping us. And we'd love to have you back um, as things uh, and more information comes available. Yep. And we are going to get final thoughts from all of these guys, but quick uh, programming note tomorrow we've got on uh, Bob Gilbert, who's the uh, CEO of HSMAI, followed by uh, Chris Green, CEO of Chesapeake Hospitality. We're going to be talking to Chris regularly about the human side of what he's been dealing with as a CEO of his management company on uh Wednesday, we've got the CEO of Remington Hotels, Sloan Dean, followed by uh, the uh, faculty over at Boston University. On Thursday, we got Chris back again to talk about different things. And on Friday, we're going to have a really great show starting out with uh, leadership. And Anthony, we've got some surprises that are coming on uh, by your end. I don't know if we could uh, we can announce that yet, but it is going to be fun. For our Feel Good Friday show, we're all about making sure you guys feel inspired going out through the weekend into the weekends. But now let's focus on some of those uh, final thoughts out there. Let's start with Brian Thornton. Uh, big final thought about how uh, you're thinking about things and whatever else is on your mind. You know, I'd like to start out and hopefully if, if there are any young designers that are fairly new in their career, and this is maybe their first recession where it's really impacting them. You know, I've been out here 40 years and I can't even count how many recessions and many recessions I've gone through. But crisis is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. And I think what's gonna come out of this, you know, if you continue to give good service, continue to use that creative mind that God gave you, and right. keep thinking and rethinking it through, and up the quality of your work, this is no time to be a slacker. You've got to work a little bit harder now. You know, with less, you're working from home, there should be no distraction. You know, this is the time to deliver the best service to your clients. It's like Anthony was saying, when this thing is over, you know, you know, we're going to come back strong and we should be able to deliver better products in a shorter time and, you know, better looking too. That always looks fabulous, right? <laughs> yep, uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I liked everything you said, except not being the slacker part. That was my goal for 2020 was to be as much of a slacker as possible. You just ruined it for me, <laughs> Brian Thornton. Neil, lots of final thoughts from you. Uh, several several of my clients uh, have used this phrase, and, uh, and it's this too shall pass. And that's how I feel, and hopefully that's how everybody feels. All right, David James? Yeah, the constant uh, theme seems to be is, you know, how can we adapt and how can we um, do better and, and help each other? And that's what this this particular group was put together originally for is, is to help each other out and, and improve the industry as a whole. And um, uh, this will this will definitely pass. And, um, you know, uh, what we've done differently is we're working uh, ahead of time um, prior to purchase orders on shop drawings and stuff like that. Um, so we're doing we're adapting to help the client in any way, shape or form, because we'll, we'll, we'll all get through this and we'll be better for it. And like everyone has said, we'll remember those that were around during the difficult times. And uh, I just appreciate all of you and, and everything we're doing and, and whatever we can do uh, to assist any of you. Please, please let us know. Thank Beautiful. I, I love it. David Messer Smith. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. I, I kind of chuckle here because. I think uh, Brian and David, we're, I'm going to reminisce here for a second. We all met back in about 2008. And Brian, David, and I all worked on a project together in different capacities. And it was tough. And I know Brian got sick of me calling him every day. And, and But, man, he was gracious. And I'll never, ever forget, Brian, I came out to Las Vegas, and Brian spent an entire day just walking me through hotels and, and showing me kind of the, the the properties from his eyes. And it was so educational for me, and, and I'll never, ever forget it. I appreciate it, buddy. This is the time to invest in people. 
uh, invest in people, grow people, um, let them know you care, take time for people. Um, and I think I think Larry said it on your podcast, uh, Anthony and, and Glenn, on Friday. You, you can't start a fire with a, with a wet mouth, right? Be positive, guys. It's yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, we all know that. Um, we don't need to keep harping on how tough it's going to be. Um, everybody, keep working hard. Stay awake. Stay positive, and uh, right, we'll all be on the other side of the shortly. Awesome. And I do want to take a moment to thank the people that are able to stick with me. Thank you very much, uh, Red Roof, for continuing to support the uh, the No Vacancy podcast. Thank you to Almo Hospitality, a great partner of mine that I hope all of you reach out to. Uh, they are going to help with uh, FF&E. And in a time of need right now, when you guys need some flexibility and a little more uh, a little more personal service, Almo Hospitality is a great place for you to find that. And uh, Anthony and I also want to thank uh, Cintas for being a great sponsor of uh, the Checking In show as well uh hbo um is still sticking uh sticking around so thank you for that all these folks you can find in our our newsletter slx hospitality they've been great partners and of course chesapeake hospitality all you guys thank you so much for continuing to support us on what we are doing even though we haven't been doing a lot of uh branded content here on the channel uh anthony you want to uh, uh, give anyone some final words before yeah, I, I we wrap up? Want to say something. someone just asked me um, i'm getting this question more and more every day what do I do if I need to sanitize my hotel and my room because somebody was in there that was quarantined um, or is going to be quarantined because there's some hotels where people are quarantined right. and they can't leave? Um, call Centos. They have products. They have the expertise to do that. So uh, this is not a sales pitch. It's just a fact. It's needed. Um, and don't let your staff who's not properly trained do it. We want to keep our employees um, employed. But th these kind of things, you want to make sure experts are doing Great. Uh, again, thank you all for being here. Remember, hashtag hospitality strong together. We will all get through this, but we have to have each other's backs, right? The only way to get to the other end of this is to continue to do what these great people here are doing. What David, Neil, David and Brian and the other folks within Hospitality Masters are doing, they've got a group of people that they could depend and rely on and share those best practices. We're going to be here doing that every day, helping you with the stuff that you need to know in order to get through this. But most important, look into your social circles through work. How can they help you get through as well? But make sure not to get within too close to them. We can't have any of that right now. Uh, Anthony, you want to take us out of here? Any final, any final, final, final words before we wrap this up? Thank you. Thank you. May your may your businesses be uh, doing well, and may your family, more importantly, do well. So again, I know we're all under a lot of pressure, but this is the time where we all step up. Thank you very much. And thank you guys again for watching. We'll be back at 12 Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow. That's 12 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time with a couple of great conversations. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks to this panel for being here today. We'll get them all back. And if you guys want to participate in all of this kind of stuff, just drop us a line. We're either at Anthony Hotels or at Traveling Glenn. You know how to find us online. Like our pages. We love you guys. Thanks for all the support. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.